doing something a bit different tonight, Marker. We're coming in red hot and straight off the top of the show, it's Adrian Horton and Tom Marcazzani in the studio on the official, unofficial podcast of the Melbourne Demons. The debrief, of course, and we're joined by an absolute jet who plies his trade down back in the red and blue, Judd McVee. Welcome, mate. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on board. Much appreciated. Mate, how are we feeling this week coming into a massive game? Yeah, body's good. Um, team's looking good. So, um, so, obviously, yeah, a huge one this week. Um, it'll be a good test for us, but uh, we're all ready to go. We're absolutely pumped. It's a massive clash. Melbourne supporters have a distinct hatred of Geelong. It's a rivalry that's built over the past five to six seasons. I, so. I hate most teams, but Geelong <laughs> in particular uh, rough my feathers for sure. Are you feeling that, Juddy? Do, do you, are you aware of uh, how much this means to the, to the supporters to try and get one over the blokes that wear the hoops? I actually didn't. <laughs> I actually didn't know that, but um, well, yeah, well, there you go. It's actually um, it's about time we've them at the G as well. So oh, um, mate, yeah, that'd that's... be great. That's a great point you make and something that we spoke about last week because as a Melbourne supporter, um, you, you pencil that game in that where we have to go down to Geelong and 90% of the time, um, you know, we we lose that game. 95%, I would well, say. Fair enough because they're, they're so good at playing that. Are we calling it a ground or is it a rectangle? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's, it's just so good that finally they have to come to us, right? And uh, is that something that internally um, you've been speaking about with the players and you're kind of like, all right, we, we don't have to go down there. It's, it's time for them to come to us. Um, it hasn't been too much on our mind, actually, because they're, they're obviously the benchmark of the competition at the moment. They haven't lost. Um, so, yeah, I think we've got to bring it to them and uh, they've played a few games at the G this year. So um, it's going to be a good clash and we all can't wait. Yeah, no, we're absolutely pumped. Now, mate, only 32 games in the red and blue, but it would be remiss of a neutral supporter, someone that didn't support the Melbourne Football Club to rock up to the G and watch you go about your footy and think that you've been playing 200 plus games in the red and blue. You've been that good ever since you made your debut. Why do you look so settled at the level? Is it to do with a lot of the blokes that are around you? You've got some great mentors because I must admit, mate, you've been pretty flawless ever since you played your first game. Um, yeah, I definitely do reckon it is um, the mentors around me. Obviously, <clears throat> down there is like Stephen May, Jake Lever, um, Tom McDonald, and then um, it just allows all of us to, to go to our strengths and do our work. We all bring something different um, and then where we all back each other's game in and we're confident with each other. So we pretty much just go from there. Yeah, I I love the team aspect there, but let's get a bit of selfish response out of you if we can. In terms of your own personal game, what do you think has developed the most in the the last year or so? Um, I'd say just my contest um, and my decision-making. I feel like when I get the ball, I'm usually making the right decision or finding the right target. So, And I just back my kick in, really. Um, yeah, so I feel like my contest and my, um, my decision making and my kicking is, um, what's, what's making me do pretty well. So, yeah, well, mate, it, it's working and especially given that, um, typically our best users out of the back line in, in Salem and Bowie have been out. So, um, that's been super important for us. Just a quick side note, 80, our producer, he thinks that Salem, and Bowie can't play in the same oh, back line. Can you can you, I'm throwing him under the bus here. They can obviously <laughs> both play in the same team. Can you tell him that he's wrong, please? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he definitely is wrong. <laughs> they can they can both play. One on Salem on his left side and then Barry on his right. Yeah, two him. good two good pegs. <laughs> yeah. I uh, was never gonna live that one down because we had a massive debate about it. And the week leading into the Brizzy game, if my mem- memory serves me Just correct, Thomas. Just before you jinx Salem into getting injured. <laughs> yeah. So it's Adrian's oh. fault. So he, it's really his fault. So I t- t- tell Christian that. By I the know. Way. I copped a lot of shit for it because a lot of people did say that I actually jinxed Salo. And then, of course, he uh, unfortunately did his hammy. But, mate, both superb players. Um, I'm happy to put my hand up and say I'm definitely in the wrong there. But I just wanted to take you back to Stephen May, Jake Lever, Tom McDonald. Three incredibly experienced players in and around you. What do those boys say to you on a weekly basis or even in the preseason when 
you're doing some team chats around team defense and how you want to set up for the season. What are the little things that they do that help you become a better player? Um, yeah, I think a few of us young guys can tend to, I mean, there was a one-on-one or miss a kick, just tend to put our heads down and kind of go, not so much go into our own shell, but get a bit um, like tight with our kicks, won't hit them or like lay back a bit. Um, so they just really just remind us, remind us like we're here for a reason, we're playing for a reason, just back yourself, back your kick back your contest decisions and um, yeah, we go from there. So it's just a bit of reinforcement um, and also positive, positive things as well because we all want each other to perform well every week and we're pretty much just pumping each other up. Um, I know on the Fox footy there was a bit about um, Lever and May having go at each other, <laughs> which is pretty funny, but um, it's kind of stuff like that. We want each other to, to succeed and to play well. So we just help each other out. We know what works well for each other. Um, and then, yeah, we pretty much just go from there. Yeah. I love that. And also what sprung to mind then was Jake Lever when he brought you guys into a huddle after Port had leveled late in the last quarter, uh, in that earlier game in the season. And it, it was almost like it was an ultimatum to you as a defensive group. It was like, all right, get your heads in the game. We've still got 10 minutes to play. We can still win this game of footy. Is it that those little moments, uh, of leadership, are those the things that you're alluding to? Yeah, for sure. Jake Lee was massive with those type of things. I think we, against Port, didn't play too well throughout the whole game. And then he just, yeah, built. So there's 10 minutes left. Let's go. We're built for this. We love these games. Um, so, it's, yeah, just reinforcement. And then um, he's obviously a great leader. And then, yeah, it actually got us over the line. So it's, a, it's stuff like that that we need each week. Love that. Great to hear. We saw, obviously, on the weekend... Uh, the emergence of Disco Turner down Woo! forward, but someone that we spoke about well on this podcast, and I'm sure amongst the Melbourne fan base, that obviously he's got a, a great future ahead of him. And but we all thought it was down back. Are you upset that he's been taken away <laughs> from you boys down back, or are, are you kind of like excited at the prospect of him playing up forward? Um, yeah, we actually are a bit bit there that he's gone, but um, to see him go forward and kick three snags and us back, we obviously love when our forward kick snags. So um, if he's up there playing well, um, yeah, we'll cop that. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'm sure you guys are sick of doing your job and seeing the forwards <laughs> really come to the floor. Is that something you guys talk about a bit? You're like, God, it'd be good if they could actually kick consistent goals. <laughs> no, nah, not really. We all, we all help each other out, so it's good. Now, uh, talking about throwing people under the bus, uh, it's my turn to throw Tom under the bus. Um, okay. We're doing a podcast, I think it was last year, and we were thinking about nicknames, of course, for, uh, for Judd McVeigh, who burst onto the scene. And I think Tom came up with Chris. <laughs> now, Chris is a big compliment, in my opinion, because of Chris Judd, of mm. course, who's one of the greatest to ever play the game. But we've probably got to put it on the agenda Tom, and I'll go to you now, Judd. Are you happy with that nickname or do you want us to put it in the bin? No, I'm definitely happy with that nickname. <laughs> oh, I think, um, yeah, if I can be <laughs> half the players, Chris Judd, and um, I'll take the take the nickname and run with that one. <laughs> yeah, beauty, mate. You'll be playing in the midfield soon enough. What What was your role in juniors, by the way, coming through? Obviously, through the factory of East uh, Fremantle, go the Sharks, and a uh, special, special comment to... Um, the Left Bank Hotel, one of the best pubs in <laughs> Australia. <laughs> a good join, isn't it? <laughs> oh, mate, how good. I became a member of the East Ferry Sharks and they got two for one meals when I was living over there. It was unbelievable. Oh, yeah, I do remember that, actually. <laughs> great great steak saying. So, <laughs> so, yeah, well, where were you playing your juniors? Like, what posse? Um, so, when I was back home in Joe, I was playing um, just midfield and then played midfield up until I went to Perth and then started on the wing at East Rio and then um, the state 18. Oh, I played state 16 in the midfield, sorry. And then um, when I got to state 18, they pretty much said, oh, we're not going to pick him if he's going to play in the midfield. And then I moved to half back, and then played the rest of my East Rio 18 year off a half back, and then the 18 as well off a half back. Yeah, nice. Are you thinking that once track drops off, Clary, Vines – all the uh, Rolls Royces in the midfield, are you pretty certain that you'll get in goodies here and make sure that you get a midfield role eventually? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'd love to. Um, I'd, yeah, I'll get in easy here, but yeah, I'd love to. I think that's the next part of my game is to go a bit higher um, and hopefully that's into the midfield. Oh, that's great. I mean, it could be the transition for... It kind of seems like the transition has started for Rivers. He's definitely playing True. predominantly down back, but... Um, it could be the two of you, Juddy. It could be... Sorry, Chris. It could be the two of you. Riv Dog going in there. We call him Riv Dog. Um, and yourself being midfielders in two or three years' time. Yeah, that'd be great. We'd both love that as well, so... That's awesome. It's just so good to see that the kind of like the depth that we have um is, is there someone that you feel like uh the outside um of the four walls and even outside of the melbourne community itself that you feel like is really biting at the bit and trying to get into this team at the moment that you feel is is a bit stiff can is there one person that you're like oh this this person you know is is coming coming hard um ooh. tough question yeah. Yeah, I'm putting you, you on. Like I'm, I am putting you on the spot. No, let's, let's, nah, let's say with within the D. So, in terms of you know people who might not know Melbourne as well, or who's who do you feel like is really developing quickly and like is knocking down the door to, to jump into this team? Um, I feel like Bill Lowe was a sub on the weekend, but his preseason was huge. He's um, yeah, he, he got fit. He made a mark. On his career, um, that's a, that's a yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting. Let's let's talk about Bill for a bit because personally, I, I kind of see him as I don't know if it's like a a confidence thing or maybe a like what what about his preseason was so good? The fact that he was running so much or that he was just fronting up or what does he offer to the team that that maybe you know the fans or me specifically can't see as much as maybe what some of the other people are offering. Um, I feel like, yeah, he just came back and he was training the house down, running the house down. Um, but, yeah, I feel like he's worked on his contest a lot. Like you see the other weekend in the VFL, he had 20 tackles. Um, yeah, that's insane. Insane. Numbers. So, yeah. So I feel like he just goes to work on his contest um, every week and he's just getting better and better. It's, uh, it's great to see. And has it been nice having Taji down there, down back and starting to make his mark in the team as well? Another shark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, another another shark. Um, yeah, I feel like he's um, fitting seamlessly down there. He's he's listening. He asks questions all the time, and um, yeah, it's great. I love that. Now, what's the mood in the camp? Five and two. It's been a good start. We've had a tricky fixture list. A lot of fixture congestion early on. It seemed like the boys were definitely a bit banged up. I had the pleasure of sitting next to Disco last night at the player sponsor night, and he said as much. He said. We really needed the buy and also the freshen up that you got with this break between games against Richmond and Geelong. So uh, I guess it's a two-pronged question. Are the boys feeling fresh and raring to go again? And then what's the mentality he- heading into the Geelong game? Like, how are you feeling about this massive challenge? Yeah, no, nah, the break was definitely good. This goes spot on there. I feel like we were a bit, uh, a bit tired, a bit sore. Um, so yeah, we had a good break there. But then the mindset going into this week, it's just it's another challenge. Obviously, I said it before, but they're the top of the table clash. Um, they're top of the table, sorry. Um, and, yeah, we've got to bring it to them and show the competition what we're about. And then I think it's another five-day break, and then we have Carlton again. So they're another top four team. So, um, but yeah, we've got two really big weeks coming up. And um, I think our mindset is just to um, just to get our game going again. Um, we love the contest. We love the defense. Um, so I feel like we'll we'll bring that, and um, yeah, it should put us in good stead. Yeah, they. I mean, they are top of the table, and they're they're playing great football. For, for me, they they just they're just so clinical, Geelong, and it's frustrating to watch about how mm. uh, measured that they can be, uh, and just how effective they are going forward. I mean, there's obviously one player who is. He's probably the best player in the comp at the moment, you'd have to say, in Jeremy Cameron. Your name has been floated, mm. actually, a few times <laughs> uh, in terms of playing on him. Is is that something you can disclose or is this going to – obviously, this is a team effort to, to look after someone of his talent, but um, internally, can you at least tell us if there's a person who's kind of been given the nod to go, all right, you're going to have to take care of Jez? 
Um, we actually haven't talked about matchups yet. We've got um, our captains run tomorrow, and we go over the matchups on um, yeah, on on our captains run. But um, yeah, look, I haven't been told if I'm playing on him or not. All right, um, let's let's say tomorrow. One, one of the other boys have. I'm not quite sure. We haven't really <laughs> spoke about that yet. Let's say Max looks at you. He goes, "All right." Well, <laughs> he goes, "What do you reckon? What do you reckon we should do? What 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 do you think that you like?" Who who do you feel like could play on someone like a Jeremy Cameron, or even a Grime oh, Myers? Annoyingly I like enough, him, um, big Tom Tom McDonald when he's deep. Okay, um, I feel like yeah, he's got the wheels to stay with him, and then he's obviously good um, in the air. And then if he goes up the ground and does what he wants, I think it'll yeah be up to one of us halfbacks to take him, and then hopefully Tom Mac can catch him on the way through if that's how they're going to play him. Yep, nice. Yeah, great call. It's a big challenge. Because you can imagine Maisie going to Hawkins, like he always does. Yeah. And then we've just got to make sure that Jake's freed up as well so he can do his intercept thing. But I, I could see a world where if he's higher up the field, Chad, you might have to be the man. Yeah, I'm more than happy to do it for the team. So, yeah, if that's what they want to throw, um, yeah, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah, to start bagging his farm or something to kind of get his mind <laughs> off the <laughs> game something. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Heard your cattle's malnutrition, mate. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind that. Now, um, I just want to do a little call to action here, of course, because for any Melbourne Football Club members, it's a bring a mate in round eight. So the club have put this on, which is a great initiative. You get a complimentary guest ticket for any of those Melbourne Football Club members. As I've just said, all you have to do is open the app, scan your guest pass at the gate. You'll get your mate in. I guess the one thing, Marker, is you just got to make sure if you're bringing a mate, they're going for the Ds. Mm. Otherwise, they can't come. Yeah, exactly. So, Juddy, it's a huge game. What do you want to say to the fans to pump them up before we let you go? Um, yeah, obviously, will see big round. Um, they're a good team, and we're coming up the ranks. We're a good team as well, so get down, support us. We'd, um, we'd love to hear you, and we're going to need you this weekend. So, Great call. Down. Couldn't agree more. We need to make it a cauldron because I've been down – the highway many, many times before and w- walked out of the ground with my tail between my legs and it's re- it's really refreshing, to be honest with you, Mark, that they're coming up our way. Yeah, come on. Like, we don't have to go to that piece of shit of a city. <laughs> <laughs> I have to come to us. On the V-line for them. Yeah. No, here we go. It's going to be good fun. Now, Judd, you've been a, a very good sport here on the debrief. We pre- appreciate your time jumping on and, mate, all the best uh, on Saturday night. It's going to be an absolute ripper. Thanks, guys. Go Dees. Go Dees. Thanks, mate. We can just keep rolling. Righto. There we go. Judd McVee. Honest. He's a good egg. Yeah. Very good egg. Very honest. Clinical. I love that he said, mate, if it's me, I'll take him. <laughs> yeah, love that. How good's that? How confident is that? He said half back, so I would imagine it would be you know, a, a him or Rivers kind of job. But on, I, honestly, I I see that matchup make, making sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's just it's just more of the, more of the way that Jeremy Cameron play. I mean, he's just like, he's just such a rare talent, such he's, a good player. Yeah, you look at him and you're like, oh, he's he seems physically unwell. Oh yeah, but he's just this. Yeah, he's so clever. Yeah, he's, he's so clever. Bit the, of a the way <laughs> <laughs> the way <laughs> the way he comes back into the Ford Fifty. Anyway, anyway, uh, just on that as well, we put it to him, the nickname. He responded well. Chris. He said Chris. Didn't mind it. So it's a big tick. It's been backed. It's sealed, signed off. Thank yep. you. So we'll continue it from this point forward. A lot of other people get disappointed. Oh, his nickname's Knuckles. They call him Knuckles. Well, we call him Chris. So. Yeah, I mean, but all, uh, the other thing is like, we don't try and like s- start anything to try and get some kind of trend going. We're just a couple of idiots who sit around a table and, and just like come up with a couple of names for us. Correct. That's all it is. Yeah. It just so happens that we're being recorded and we're having a conversation about this team that we like way too much and our life should <laughs> absolutely cops it because of it. It's it's actually absurd. So I, I was walking out of the MCG last night after the player sponsor night that they had a bit of a trivia and I'm walking out and I'm just like buzzing and I'm just like, fuck, I love this club. And I'm just like walking home, getting the train, thinking about, the conversations I've had with Disco and Tommy Sparrow that were on the table with me. And 
it's these little events and these little moments that make you love it even more. And then I'm sitting in bed, like literally staring at the ceiling, just thinking about matchups. And I'm just, it was at that point just before I went to sleep where I'm like, you've got a fucking problem. Yeah. You're like, unwell. Like what, you, <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like yeah. you let this thing rule you and dictate your life so much to the point where you're actually staring at a ceiling mm. and thinking about, oh, who goes to Jezza? Oh, who goes to oh, Hawk? Yep. May. Oh, yep. Got to make sure for levers. Oh, oh no. Grime. My eyes. Oh no, Brad Close. Oh my god, Tom Stewart. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, man, you gotta chill. But it was um it was a great night last night. Disco was amazing. Uh very easy bloke, very laid back, um, bit of a character, likes to have a laugh. Um, it was funny, Marco. We got through two rounds and they did the results. So it was a four round thing, and you do the first two, and then they're like, All right, we'll read out the scorecard, and they go in twenty 20- sorry, what were they scoring? Uh, just trivia. It was oh, just, so it was a trivia night. Yeah, trivia okay. night. And Sorry, I just simply was not listening to you. You weren't listening at all, but that's okay. Um, and we got two two rounds in. They're like, all right, we're halfway through. We'll read out where people are at. <laughs> were, they funny to, were they funny names and that sort of thing? Yeah, it was good. It was just a, it was just a collectic bunch what were the, of questions. The, all, okay, so all... Movies. Okay. Figure out this Scrabble. Stuff. Yep. Like all this random shit. It was good. Um, and I was in charge of writing down the answers. So they're like, podcast boy. Big Big. responsibility. They're like, here's the pen. And I'm like, well, I can't write. I can just talk. They're like, I'm like, you've got it wrong. So like, no podcast boy. So I had to to write the answers out. And I chose the name Disco's Dancers because I was like, well, he's the man in the moment. Like he's For big, sure. He's been, he's it's on than, trend. He's bigger yep. than Max Gorn this week. So Disco didn't really like it, which made me want to back it in more. So I was like, well, you're stuck now, mate. So we made it Disco's Dancers. So everyone else in the room knew what our team name was and who was on our team, obviously. And they read the answers out and they go, all right, at the bottom, in 21st place, Disco's Dancers. <laughs> and Cade Chandler who was on a table about 20 metres away from us and had clear sight of Disco, just lays back on his chair, points at Disco and just starts fucking cacking himself, (laughs) just pointing at him going, ah, ah. Anyway, they got the scores wrong. So we weren't actually in last place. So they did a recount and they're like, oh, you're actually in 12th. And we're like, oh, thanks. So they hung us out to dry and make us look like fuckheads. The damage was done by the sounds of it. The damage was done. But then the worst thing is we got to the very end. They did the scorecard again and they hadn't read our name out until like we got to the top five and it's like they haven't read our name out. Get to fourth, haven't read our name out. And then they're like, and the top three. And we're like, we've made top three. Like we've come from the heavens. Like we've stormed up the charts. They get to third, they read it out. They get to second, they read it out. And then we're like, we've won. We're all sitting on the table being like, I can't believe we've gone from 12th to first and then they read someone else's table out and they just forgot to read ours out <laughs> so then chin got another go at us because he we were getting excited because we were like we've won he we've was won. watching the whole thing we've won and we didn't win so it was just stupid so it was a comedy of errors but um a very good night and uh disco he's pumped like he knows how much people want to beat along so i explained that to him like mate i hate him and he's like well i'm he's a richmond supporter growing up yeah um, and when Richmond came good in, in 17, and obviously Geelong have always been up there, they had some really good tussles and battles. Mm. So um, I think there's a sp- special little place in his heart when it comes to Geelong and a uh, bit of tension there. So Can it's we good. take these headphones off, by the way? Oh, you want to take them off? Yeah. Yep. I'll do my head in a bit. So do you know one thing that like... <laughs> bit of a ruffle, maybe? A couple of chippies, maybe. Oh, oh just kidding. Um <laughs> One thing that, like, yes, the whole disco thing is sick, right? Mm. It's it's great to watch. But another, it, it's like a bit of a paradox in that it's also a bit frustrating that, like, someone else is coming in. It's been one game. Like, I'm not saying, like, it's, like a, it's a solidified thing. But it's, like, it's, like... still the forward line structure is as confusing as ever. Yeah, true. Like, it's... it's it, it's a. It was an immediate answer for that game, but it's. It almost leaves more question marks for the season. Yep. Um, and I hope it just continues. Obviously, but you know, we 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 saw a a piece of what uh, Petty's capable of last year. 
but it was only a small sample size. We've seen nothing. We haven't seen much at all this year. Mate, I mean, nothing. you you sent that like infographic of uh, it was like he's almost one of the worst rated players in the comp or something. Yeah, year. do we want to potentially look at it? Look at it so then we don't try and make up any numbers because numbers aren't my thing. But you don't need to look at numbers just to know that clearly out of form. Yep. Um, and look, he he's coming back from a th- an injury which was pretty full, full on. I think that's something to make note of, which means that a preseason wasn't um, – Fulfilling, I don't know whatever word. Well, it you want wasn't to... adequate. No, you didn't have enough. So you it, didn't do enough. I, I don't. I don't know if it's something that okay. It's a long year, right? Yeah. Um. So he can work into it, but it's like, where do you? How do you work into it? Do you work into it by playing down back and just getting that confidence back? Because no, we know he's a gun defender. We can't take T Mac out. Yeah, he's been too good. That's the only like for like. You can't take him out. Like yeah, and, 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 but I just. Amazing. You can't keep playing Petty the way he's been playing. Well, how, I mean, how many, how many games, do you, you, how many games are you gracing him? Well, that's why. Because if it was Shaki yeah. playing this type of footy, we would give him max two games. Yeah. Max. Agree. So I, I don't know if it's a matter of, okay, um, we just have to get minutes into him. Mm hmm. But it's like, we also have to win games. This competition is bloody tough. And I, we can't be carrying someone through a forward line that is already harpened by having no really es- like established key forward, apart from Ben Brown, who's in his twilight of his career. He's an established key forward, but we obviously know the position that he's in within his career and, and yeah. longevity and all that. I'm not going to lie. like It's a massive problem. I think it's one of the biggest topics of conversation it's weird how we just can't get away from this like we've been speaking about oh this. man it's so it's it sucks it's to months. talk about it all the time it's 18 months but you have to yeah it's, it's crazy but look at these numbers for petty so afl player ratings has petty as our second worst player of the season now he's actually our worst player because the only other player who's ranked lower than him is colton tholstrop and he's only played oh, one you game. can't yeah you obviously can't so it's irrelevant. In, yeah. um, he wore his sunnies into the room last night. Did well. he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a unit. Didn't oh, speak to him, but uh, he's huge. a unit. Um, so he's not just out of form. Like He's going extremely poorly. Yeah. He's kicked one goal five from nine shots. We know that he had to play back for a bit. Yeah. That's that okay. was like a game and a half max though. Game and a half, maybe two at a stretch. So three no scores as well. Uh, he's had two effective disposals over the last two games. <laughs> Man, the, these stats are hard. But, but this is the one that this is actually the one that got me, Mark. Up. He's actually he's only winning fourteen percent of his one on ones, mm. and that surprises me because Crazy. when I think of Petty, I think of this competitive beast who is a bit of a psycho on the field. Like he, I, I don't know him from a, a bar of soap. Obviously, I don't know any player from a bar of soap, but. The way that he presents himself is this kind of calm, kind of nice, you know, seems like a nice fella. Mm. But then on the field, he's a bit of a psycho. Oh, yeah. Like I remember in the prelim against Geelong, I was settled down. I was watching his matchup closely and he dominated Cameron. Um, Cameron, I think, could have been a little bit injured. But regardless, he dominated him. And then Cameron got a mark late in the game. Yep, and Petty was fu- like furious with himself. We'd won the game. We'd won the game a quarter previous, but he he like just was so angry with himself, and it just it just showed once again like the competitive nature of this guy. Like he's a bit of a psycho in that sense. So the fourteen percent fourteen rate is a wild stat for a bloke who is that's his. One would almost the way that he kind of competes one on one and 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 battles and just you know you think of his defensive work he never lets people beat him but like fair enough if you're not grabbing it and you're not taking marks and but fourteen percent's really bad. I'm looking at Fullerton as one of the options that comes in for him. <sighs> yeah, I, I've had, I've been really surprised and shocked that he hasn't already. 
Yeah, because I've seen him at Casey. I've been <coughs> really impressed with what he's been doing the last two or three weeks. You'd simply yeah. never answer this call, by the way. Oh, God, no. Don't God, even no. think about it. For the listeners' but sake, I, it's uh, one of the most obnoxious Collingwood supporters you'll ever Yeah, and, and in your head, you're probably thinking, oh, no, I know, I know, no, 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 no. No. This guy is messed up. <laughs> messed up is the perfect, <laughs> perfect way to... Um, to summarise him, um, uh, yeah, we got a, we got a, we got a special little guest. We got to call him, so we got to put the cans back on. Really? Yeah. And Derek, are you ready for a call? Is, d- is yeah, we're gonna do a phone. Is up. is Derek ready? Oh my god, people are like, oh, yeah, who put are they your calling? pants on, Derek? Are they calling in Riv Dog? Is this the double whammy? Yeah. Are we getting a Riv Dog in a? In yeah, a we just want to find out pod? who's playing on Jeremy Cameron. It's His basically. answer was terrific, by the way. Yeah, love that. Um, yeah. And you can tell he's pining for the midfield one day. Yeah. Wants it. Goody. I mean, he's so good down back, though. Like He will be a mid. He's got all the tools. Yeah. All the tools to be a mid. Are, good, we, good, are good, we good, Derek? Good size for a mid. Yeah, far out. Also, love that he's going to be there forever. <laughs> Maybe a late night call when we flag. Yeah. Hey, come to kick ons. Come to kick ons. He won't be coming. That's okay. God no. Uh, all right, we're gonna we're gonna call him in. Let's have a go. Let's uh, turn him up. See if we can hear him. All the listeners are like, who the hell is it? Is it Riv Dog? What's up, man? <laughs> How you going? No, Hello, Nug. I'll hey. just chuck you on speaker. Oh, no worries. Oh, it's King there. Yeah, King's here. Say oh. good day. G'day, g'day, g'day. Goldie's here. Say g'day. G'day, Goldie. Hey, uh, Goldie. Y- you're live. You're live on the debrief. G'day, King. G'day, Goldie. Oh, you can really hear Goldie. <laughs> That's Goldie. Goldie's <laughs> Yeah, Goldie's absolutely pumped. Uh, we we just had a great chat to uh, to Judd McVee, and he's actually quite content with the nickname. Nug, no, he likes Chris. Oh, how was it? It was good. I'm just saying, he loves the nickname Chris. Like he he signed it off. Yeah, well, it's a horrible nickname, but uh, we'll move on. <laughs> I don't mind it. Um, now, what's the vibe down there, mate? Obviously, you live in Geelong and Kingo lives in Geelong and you're just having a few quiet sherbets tonight, but what's the word around yeah. town about this game? Um, well, we actually just went past uh, GMHBA or Ugh. go and get Fuck Stadium and uh, just to check out the vibe, but there was no one there, as this expected. Right now. <laughs> yeah, you can see it from where we're si- at the Como, which is the pub we're at. Oh yes, uh, we're out in the uh, back area, and you can you can see the lights from here, so we're pretty close. I'd say we're about five hundred meters away, um, and it's uh, in terms of the atmosphere before the game this weekend. I'd say it's virtually zero um, at the moment. <laughs> King, have you yeah. uh, have you there, been? There really isn't any vibe. Um, it's it's like they're just. No, last year didn't happen, and uh, that was just an aberration, and that they're just back to normal winning games. So um, we're just out here having a couple of beers and um, just trying to soak in. Have, 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 have either of you been to the stadium since it's been done up? Yeah, no, no, we haven't, no. The, the, the what, last time we were there was the famous Big Bash uh, disaster <laughs> where they played about five overs of... Five overs of cricket, and then the pitch was too dangerous. So yeah, GMHBA, it's, it's not doing, it's not doing well, much in the big bash either. Look, mm. the place sucks. Like it's, we don't love it, um, mm. and we, we love living here, but we we hate everything about the football club and the stadium. So um, yeah, we're, we're a little. I'm, well, personally, I'm a bit skeptical about the uh, the game this week because they just seem to win again. Marks need to be massive question mark on Geelong supporters, like. It's seven. You're seven and zero. Why aren't you just filling the streets up? Like, there's no, there's nothing happening. Um, it's a bit disappointing. So, yeah, as I said before, no vibe whatsoever here down down at ground level. Well, it, it, it doesn't it. surprise it's, me. Uh, they're, they're... Great report back, King. And uh, if you guys have any, have any more questions, let us know. Yeah, well, they're, I mean, they're simply just one of the most boring sides to watch. If I'm honest, they're clinical. But they're boring as hell, and um, the term flooded. I've got Jez, though. Oh, you've got Jeremy Cameron. Oh, so. mate, uh, you, you, you beat me to it. He's the only reason why you watch the game uh, yeah. that, that Geelong's playing, and 
And you watch the game because <laughs> Jeremy Cameron's playing. He's a gun. Well, it's the same as watching fucking West Coast for Harley. You, you watch Geelong for Jez even though he's like 15 years older. I, I watch it for Alec. Uh, sorry, not Alec Waterman. Uh, Jake Waterman. <laughs> Alec. 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 I didn't mind. I feel like I feel like Alec was hard done by. I, th- I think Alec was misunderstood. Kingo's an Essendon fan, for the he, listeners' he was sake. A dead idea. He yeah. he just give him the ball and he he put it through. But he just the problem was he just never got the ball. Yeah, yeah. he his thighs got in the way. They were ginormous. <laughs> he was yeah. misunderstood. Um, Nug, you're saying Jeremy Cameron's the only bloke you'd ever watch in Geelong colours. How many oh, blokes? You, no, there's one other. There's one, there's one more. Who? Grind, grind Myers. Who? Well, Gr- Grind well, Myers plays the game exactly as it was meant to be. So, um, <laughs> so it's, yeah, gri- it's, it's Grind and Jezza. Fan. Okay. Well, he did, he did say Nuggets. And um, I, I was thinking more um, <laughs> Tom Gato Stewart Jr., but he's re- obviously retired. Yeah. Um, he hasn't played for a while. But yeah, Grind, his name's funny, so we get around him too. Yeah. Also, imagine if you had a kid and you looked at it and you said, all right, what about Grind? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> crazy call. I like Gary. I like huge Ryan. call. <laughs> it's like it's basically. I think because I had to do the same thing with Goldie. Like when I put her down, write her name, and um, maybe maybe the grind's dad was pissed and spelt Brian wrong. I have no idea. Yeah. He wanted but, Gary, um, and so his partner wanted we're Ryan. Talking about you know past players at Geelong. One of the other fun facts about Geelong is if you go to the Village Cinema in the main street. They've got a cinema named after Paul Couch, like an, an actual the, one of the theatres. I think it's Theatre 8, and it's just called Paul Couch Theatre. Um, so you go see, like, you know, this weekend you go and see... Um, Kong v. Godzilla. Go, go see June 2 or something, and they just give you a ticket, and they go, yeah, you're in the Paul Couch. Yeah. <laughs> and I also saw um, Gary Elliott Jr. there as well, and it was, uh, it was quite the moment for me in my Geelong experience. But... Um, yeah, all's going well down here, fellas, and uh, <laughs> I think we might have to leave you to it. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, boys. Yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, what's your predico, Nuggo? Kingo, you got any words? You got uh, Give us a prediction, Kingo, yeah, as, a, as a neutral supporter. Oh, a pre- a pre- I'll give I'll give you a predico. Um, everyone will get up and about. Um, be like, yep, yeah, I'm in pits better than theirs. Danger fills out. Geelong by fifty. There we All go. Right. Nice. Uh, for me, I think uh, actually, I'm not just saying this because I'm on the pod, but uh, I think the days will win. I, I think seven zero is it's obviously Geelong are a very good side, but I think it's um, I don't think they'll go. I don't can't see them going too many more games undefeated. Um, so yeah, days for me. Oof. And and um, Goldie, your thoughts? Here we go, Goldie. And... <laughs> Yep. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Respect. Ooh. What's she saying? Okay. No, no, I got it. I got it. I know what she's saying. Yeah. You, can you All right, tra- sounds good, guys. You, Thanks for that. Can you translate for All us? All right, see you, guys. Yep, see you, boys. <laughs> see you. That was brilliant. Thank you. Um, oh, the listeners will love that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, listeners. Oh, I mean, sorry, listeners, for maybe no, but Kingo, the Paul Couch little side note. That was nice. I dig that. I was into that. Could you translate what Goldie was saying then? Uh, something about D's and winning. I'm not sure exactly what, but that was like the main gist of it. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that. Um, mate, before we have a break in 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll do the teams. We can go the whole way through if you want to, but... Um, I, I need a break. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a break in 10. Um, this week, I put it on the agenda on the review show. I haven't got a run sheet in front of me, but... I reckon this is a week for Jack Viney, Clayton Oliver, Christian Petrarca to get going. So track was a little bit down, although I went back, watched the tape. It's not a bad game, actually, but it's just not the, the 30 and 2 and the ridiculous clearances and all these, all these other things that we're so accustomed to with him. Jack Viney's just been down in general. Clary's obviously been down in general. He's been hampered by that injury. He should be better for the break that we've had as well. I'm looking to those three guys this week because mm. we know what Max is all about. Max is in all Australian form. He's going to get his seventh jacket. We've spoken about it in recent weeks. He's in stupid form, like unbelievable form, Max. He's he's evergreen. Like he's aging like a fine wine. But for me, I think we've got to put a bit more onus on those three Rolls-Royce mids, as I said to Juddy before. They gotta get going. Oh, I mean, I I spoke about Clary during the week in the thread, and there's only so many weeks you can grace him. Yeah, with like, oh yeah, he's got the hand. It's like, well, 
I'm sorry, but like, don't play him if he's not going to perform. So absolutely, there's onus on him. Petrarca, I'm not putting any onus on. He was still pretty good last week. Yeah, but like he, he can he can have ten quiet weeks. Like you know the way the way the, what he's done for us in the last couple of years. Like you know you can't expect him to go ballistic. But absolutely yes, and he would be the first person to say that as well. Um, and what an opportunity for Viney as well. I, I just feel like. Their mids suits kind of Viney as well, the the way in which they play. Um, Dangerfield is a big out, but he hasn't really featured a hell of a lot this year anyway. But I don't know if you saw the Carlton Geelong game. He was he was turning the clock back, the the clock back Dangerfield. He was oh, he was amazing, psycho. Yeah, mental. But that I saw something may have been on the AFL website about is Dangerfield's. Uh, worst enemy himself the like later in in his career so what they're trying to say there is like uh, in terms of just the way how he's 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 very ballistic and his approach and, and yeah and he's exactly his body type and and all that yeah is it is it now time given your age and you might have this year and the year after and then it's maybe hang boots up time for patty it was do you just need to rein it in ever so slightly? Because even if I he, don't think he can, but man. I know that, and he probably only plays one way. And, nor, but, and kind of nor should he as well in in a lot of ways. Like it's just like that argument's really funny because how many games has he played? He would have played a lot. I'll go. I'll go and look it up now. But it's a funny argument because people are saying, "Oh, is he a danger to himself the way that he plays the game?" No pun intended. I mean, it's it's but, a, it's a hammy. You know, it's a soft tissue and. They they happen more often than not when you're a bit older, and he's already played so much footy. Like that's such a massive accomplishment, and he could he could never play a game again. And his resume obviously is unbelievable. It's psycho. It's a it's a crazy resume, and I probably haven't given him enough respect over the journey. Well, just that's because he, he's a flog. Yeah, he just shits me. He just you can't like him. I mean, yeah, I find him very unlikable. Yeah, I think he, incredibly. We, we, everyone's the same with him, but like you know, unless you're Geelong. You, you put that as, oh, man, I've got Geelong friends who are just like, I hate him, <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> yeah, but I love him. Um, it, it, it's the same argument if if people said, oh, you know what, Jack Viney, you got to rein it in a little bit. And we'd be like, well, he can't. No, you can't You can't change the fabric of a player who's that well established. His his resume is Unless you mental. play him in a different position, but like, is Jack Viney going to play in a halfback? No. Is, is Dangerfield going to play in a halfback? No. 324 games. It's a lot. Oh, like it's a lot of footy. Yeah, eight all Australians. <laughs> a Brownlow. Yeah, and, and then what? Three uh, Geelong best and fairests. Uh, one of them, I believe. Let's have a look. No, not in the premiership year, but sixteen, seventeen, nineteen. The yeah, resume is yeah. stacked, man. Like I'm just looking at it now. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Won the coaches uh, association. Player of the year. He's, he's won Players Association. Yeah, the Lou Richards Medal, of course. Very prestigious. Um, yeah, it's a crazy resume. Look, am I happy that he's out this week? Yeah, absolutely. Like, leadership as well. He leads from the front. He's very similar to Jack Viney in that what he does on the field elevates all the teammates around him. Mm. It's not necessarily what he says maybe off the field, although I don't look at Geelong um, that much, to be honest. Geelong are probably one of the least teams I look at in terms of press and overall coverage. I'll watch the odd game with Geelong, of course, and I'll be barracking for the opposition but that's, side. That's but... why you don't watch them, and it's, it goes back to my point of, about speaking to King Owen Nark, that they're boring. They're really boring to watch. They're not like... If, if you're someone who loves um, system and, and methodical football, you'll love Geelong. But True. If you're the average spectator, and not saying average is in like an average person, yeah, just like you know, the general fella or lady or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. That here. deserves one of these. A couple of chippies, but oh, they're coming. You know, you don't. You, you go to watch like Collingwood, or you go to watch the Blues, or you, even anyone. But Geelong's just like this slow play and. Yeah, Cameron is someone 
to to take note of and watch a hundred percent. But the rest, like it's it's pretty boring. I feel like you just don't like their players. Do you think the players are placid or like I'd i Geelong are right up there for me. Could almost be my most hated. Oh no, Essendon. Sorry, always Essendon. No, are you. T- I'm I'm talking about just as a as a spectacle to watch I, a game if they're playing. Rarely, I'm like, oh, look at this game. This is mad. In fairness, last week was a pretty sick game. But that aside, this year it's kind of like, yeah. I think there's a degree of jealousy. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'm not shying away from that. They they epitomize success Mm. and they have since 2005. 2007. Oh, 2005, you know, Nick Davis does the craziest shit of all time and... Knocks them out. They were still there. They were in the finals. Yep. 2004, five or six, they made another 2004, we beat them in the finals? No, we lost to Essendon. In 2004? That's Essendon's last final win. Okay, it must have been like the year. And of course it was against us. Of Mm. course. But so, yeah. I, I think player personnel as well for me. So I think, but so, they're all wear headbands, and it's like, you no, guys I know. But sometimes I think about like colored di- jasney, and individu- blitzers, individual just players, Reece Stanley, like individual players. I look at them and I'm like, yeah, not really. Like Zach Tui, I don't mind. Oh, I like Tui. I reckon he's a good egg. I like, like Tui. I like Stewart. Max Holmes, I'm like no mate. But the mm. Henrys, it's like no. Nah. Uh, the Henrys, nah, wouldn't have thought. They so. seem like. A little, have you seen the movie These Hills Have Eyes? Gary Rowan, no, that's, I haven't. That's the the Henrys remind me of those people. Yeah, Mitch Duncan, yeah, no nah, mate. Um, yeah, Tommy, yeah, he's a good fella, but yeah, nah. I actually just think, per like just persona on field, ugh, like you know. That's what I'm saying. Much. They're boring. Mm. They're just clinical though. They're so good. Their system is clinical. They've got a coach who's clinical. They know how to win. They're confident. They're measured. Uh, and, and their football like, ground is a rectangle. They're just like they're done before. And, yeah, they play on a, a ground that should not even be referred to as a ground. It's like a, a really long, elongated netball court. Chris liked that. Got a good chuckle from him. He oh. enjoyed that one. It was glad. good. All right, we'll have a break. We'll we'll ruffle these bad boys. We'll get stuck into them. And then uh, we'll come back, read the teams out, get excited, do our predictions. And then we've got to get out of here because it's the showdown. Oh, the showdown. I actually love the showdown. Could, oh, mate. Could be my favorite fixture. Give me St. Kilda Gold Coast. I'll, I'll take anything. <laughs> but yeah, the showdown suit. Maybe we'll rank our favorite rivalries. We'll do that at the end. We'll do our top five. Sounds good. Sweet. We're taping. We're taping. Okay, we're back. Chips were good. Chips are, chips are always good. Don't. Sorry to the listeners. Don't be silly. That's the actual reason why we had a break. We just want to smash a few chippies. So we've learned our lesson. We took the feedback very seriously. I put out a public apology as well on the channels, on the socials. Next time we'll be don't have a crying baby. <laughs> Yeah, don't have a crying baby will be the next thing. That's okay. Maybe the parents out there will understand that. Maybe the people who don't have children will be like, ah, never again, never again. We'll see. It was good to check in with Nug for all of two minutes. Yeah, good to hear from him. He gave us sweet F all. Kingo no. gave us more. Yeah, Kingo did well. He gave us much more about the vibe around the town down was, there in Geelong. Yeah, story about Paul Couch. That was good. That was fantastic. I love how you called the ground a shithole to Judd McVeigh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I think that and like... It was brilliant. The SCG <laughs> suck. Oh, SCG. Don't get me started. It's not good to watch football. It is not good. It is not good. Um, just before we get to team news, at the time of recording, it's 6.18, so it'll we'll be out in two minutes. Geelong. So the one thing I noticed in the Geelong and Carlton game was the avalanche of statistics that were in Carlton's favour. So 66 in... Can I quickly cut you off and just say that a lot of these stats are kind of irrelevant these days? Uh, They are, but I want to illustrate that point. Not completely irrelevant. No, but... All right, so I'll let you go. No, no, it's fine. So uh, 66 inside 50s to 45... Efficiency inside 50. Geelong went at 62.2%. Carlton went 
Carlton went at 45.5%. So there's a big discrepancy there. And then when you look at clearance, clearance was funny because earlier in the game, clearance was wild. I think at half time, Carlton were plus 17 in clearance. They ended up being plus six in clearance by the end of the game. And then contested possessions, Carlton were plus 19. It's all the statistics we've seen over the journey that Melbourne have been dominant in, yet found ways to lose a game of footy. Chris Scott wanted the game that played out in the end. So he probably knew deep down, Carlton's midfield with Cripps and Walsh and Kennedy and Hewitt and the like, they're going to dominate our midfield because it's a little bit threadbare, bar Paddy Cripps. Um, Cam Guthrie only just came back. Um, Mitch Duncan... I don't know, he's, he's going at the moment, I guess. Um, they probably want a little bit more from him. I almost feel like Chris Scott was happy to concede. Not happy to concede, but just put the white flag up and knew. Carlton will probably dominate us in all these different areas. The one thing that Carlton absolutely butchered, in my opinion, was how aggressive their defensive line was. The last line of defense. So I watched this game pretty closely. It's probably the most... Just given the fact that we're playing Geelong this week, Carlton next week, it's the closest I've watched a neutral game all season. Because I'm like, how are these two teams setting up? And the one tactical thing that I look out for, and I don't look out for many tactical things because I always say this, I don't know that much about footy, but I know defensive grids and I know defensive lines because you can fucking see it. Mm. So you're sitting there watching. It's always better when you're at the ground. But Carlton's press was mental. It was up on the halfway line when they had um, territory or a stoppage in their in their front 50. It was just too aggressive. So Geelong said, okay, we're happy to play this game. As soon as they won the ball, and they showed some great footage on Fox Footy around this, as soon as they won the ball, it was guys like Holmes, it was guys like Myers, guys like Close who, can, who are rapid. Just breaking the lines. And they were just running off their direct opponents and running them off their feet. Um, Blitzarves did it at times as well and he's a terrific player and it was really easy in the end and I feel like Carlton made Geelong look better than what they are Mm. and the reason I say that marker is because and I, I, I this isn't I'm not trying to be disrespectful to Geelong however the biggest thing for me is the caliber of opponent that they've come up against in the first seven rounds. Now, people go, you just got to beat what's in front of you, and I totally understand but that. But we're in that same boat as well. 100% we're in that same boat, and there's no guarantees that we Except rock Except we've lost two games and they haven't. Yeah, but I look at it and I go, okay, St Kilda by eight points. Adelaide in the second round, they, lost, uh, they beat them by 19 points. Adelaide had them on the ropes for a bit in the last quarter and just could not score. And didn't hit the scoreboard, and they kicked inaccurately. They kicked 11 11. You know, Geelong kicked the 14 12. Geelong probably deserved to win the game, but it wasn't a convincing victory. And we know what Adelaide have been like in the first six, seven rounds. They then go and beat the Hawks, because that's a guarantee. They then go and beat the Dogs by four points, and they hang on for dear life at the very end of that game. They beat North. They beat North, as you just said, by 75 points. They then get a game in a torrential downpour against Brisbane, which completely cooks Brisbane's ability to go with Geelong because, no disrespect to Chris Fagan, Chris Scott's a much better coach than you. And and when it's wet, just to go back to basics and fundamentals... I couldn't believe the way Brisbane played that game. It was stupid. Seeing seeing just those conditions is just so, so dumb. So dumb. And Geelong played it so well. And, And, like, I mean, they just... they. They're almost built for yeah, and wet we, weather as well, Geelong. They're, they're good at it. They're very good at it. For sure. And then we get back to last week. Like Carlton end up kicking 15-15. Geelong kick 18-10. If Carlton take their Geelong, opportunities. Yeah, but uh, I will say that it, after watching that game, it felt like Geelong controlled that game far more than Carlton. I and, disagree. And, and, and Carl, well, Carlton had their burst for sure, but... It just goes back to that point about the inside 50 stat. And yes, Carlton had more of them, but Geelong had just set up so well. But Carlton just played into their hands. So yeah, but, but that's there's, just, a bit, there's a bit of both there, right? They're not going to get that, though. It's they're going to get it's an not ugly all game. Geelong that yeah. like, they just set up like perfectly. It's not all Carlton that they just 
were horrible as well. It's like there's there's a there's a balance there. Yeah. But for me, watching that game, I just felt as though Geelong were were more controlled the game for longer and should have won. I think I think the thing for me is there's two sides to this, and I reckon it's this simple. You can underestimate Geelong at your peril, and if people think that's what I'm doing, fair enough. I think their form line flatters them a little bit. However, they've still got out there and they've got the job done as they needed to. Against some cannon fodder, yes, but again, they just need to get the chocolates. If if they beat us and they beat us convincingly, I will tip my hat to Geelong and I'll go, all right, I'm convinced. Yep. You are real. I can't see them. They're not being us convincingly. Yeah, but if... It's only if we kick 622 or some shit like that. Which is not beyond us. Not never beyond us. But for me, for this is how I see Geelong. Consistently, almost the best team in it. Probably are the best. They are the best team in it consistently. In terms of if you look, if you want a consistent performance ceiling, they're not in the top three. Who have you got in front? Giants on their day beat Geelong. Yep. Carlton on their day. Beat Geelong. Us on our on our day, we beat Geelong. But over the course of you know, with consistency and as it's shown, they're just clinical, and they're just their system always holds up, and they've just got a group of people who just they know what to do, and how to do it, and just to do it every week and to be calm about it. But if we if we come in and we're hot. And remain that way, and and play our brand. I just, I'm, I'm really confident that we will, that we will beat them. But I'm just not entirely confident that we will get that because probably the last time we saw it was like the first half of the the Adelaide game. Up until then, since then it's been a little bit, you know. And I don't know, I don't know how much you can take out of the Richmond game. Obviously not the first half, but the second half, it's like well, we expected that because of who we, were, who we were playing. And maybe we didn't give Richmond enough credit for the pressure that they brought. True. I don't know. Maybe. But, but I just feel like if we come in hot, they can't go with us. No way. The only They re- can't. Yeah, but the only I, I still have a firm belief that... And that's probably that thing of me being blind to them because I just... It's just that it's the def- fucking despise them so much. It's the defensive thing for me. It's the but our defense is mint. No, I know that, but it it's don't. But our forward line don't is- don't do what Carlton did. So don't play such an aggressive press. Drop your line 40, 50 meters back. Cut off the exits. So when we're defending in transition, you traditionally can- we do press pretty hard though. We do press hard. We I still think and where we bleed goal is that kind of. Yes, where you can just picture Cameron just like it's the it's it's like the, a just it's the rebound waltzing 50. in it's 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 the it's the Joe the Goose. I think Melbourne will make it ugly, and I think we have to make it ugly because I think you have to respect guys like Holmes and Myers and Close and all these runners, and the best way to limit them force them wide get numbers behind the ball and just shut down their exit and their kicks so every single time they win it at half back in the same vein that we did on king's birthday against collingwood it was as soon as the ball was in the hands of the opposition it was like high half forwards are up everyone's retreating everyone's blocking space guarding space forcing them wide they've got nowhere to go i reckon we're going to do the exact same thing Exact same thing. I'm not expecting a what was the Carlton to long game? 118 oh, to 105. There's, there's no like n- n- neither team will get to 100. This this this, this it will be it will be like 65 70. to 78 or something like that. It's got it's got it written all over it. We will ha- we will make it an absolute scrap. Will it be boring for the neutral? I hope so. Because if it is, we're a big chance. But if we give them that luxury that Carlton gave them, I thought Michael Voss was technically ignorant. But then... he addressed that as well after he he kind of he, he kind of said just de- defensively they just yeah. they weren't at the level and people were going oh you know Carlton should still hold their head high after that it's like 
no, you, you let you let an opposition team score 120 points. It's like, yeah, you you scored 100, and that's another thing to look at with Geelong. Like they bled 100. Yeah, yeah, they bled 100. So that that that's the other point as well. Like we've got an opportunity. But with that being said, we don't have no Mackay or Kerno. <clears throat> but we've got an opportunity to make it a scrap, make it ugly and try and generate as much score as we can at our end. Like, will we have enough to kick a big enough score? I think we've always, we always got enough. We always do. We've always we got always enough. We always have enough. We always have the... The other thing is, will we be, eff- like, effective enough to kick the score? You know, will we... We'll, we'll have enough looks. We always do. Yeah. It's just if we kick more goals than not, which is such a f- obvious bloody thing to say, but... With us, it's it makes or breaks us so often. Yep. The, the effectiveness. Just got to take our chances. A team's in or what? Teams are in. No change. For both. No, they have changes because, of course. Uh, oh, danger! Stewart is back. I'll go through their changes, but no changes for us. I think that makes absolute sense. Did Stewart? So Stewart didn't play last week. No. No, didn't play last week. But uh, he's most certainly in this week. It's a massive in for them. Massive. Oh, but like I, I want to play against Stewart. Annoyingly, a guy that ripped us to shreds the last time we played them is in Gary. Gary Rowan. Yeah, he was basically the guy beat us last. He was time. the difference. He was huge, huge. Because you remember, um, Jez went down in the first quarter. Yep, got knocked out by his own teammate. Yep, and it was Gary. by Gary. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It was Gary. Yeah. Uh, Jai Clark is in. Is he the Irish fella? Uh, no, that's... What's that guy's name? I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. Who cares? <laughs> Boring piece of shit. Um, so, Jai Clark's 19. He's 181 centimetres. He's a midfielder. Oh, okay, Jai. Whatever. Mark O'Connor managed. Danger out and Brandon Parfit managed. Tom Stewart, it's the headline. Gary Rowan, very nifty player. Did a job on us last season, as we just said. But yeah, for Melbourne, it's settled. It's a super settled lineup. They're look, they're a really good team. I'm just, I'm, I'm like you. I'm not convinced that Geelong are top three at all. But like, with that being said, they've banked enough games and they've got enough games at home now, whereby they pretty much will be. Could be. They pretty much will be top four. Like they, they probably should be with the way that I think they have eleven. How many games do they have? At, that piece of crap thing that they play at. They've got heaps and they've got, they've got a lot of a lot of games coming in the back end. I believe. They've also got, obviously, dangers out at the minute, but they've basically got and have had no injuries as well. Yeah. So let's hope that there's a few of them. Let's hope there's a bit of carnage. Um, I think just looking at our team, a few players I want to mention. Jack Billings. It's big for him. It's a big game, big stage. He showed signs. He was good in the third quarter last week. He had a poor first half, but a lot of players but, did. I mean, the first is like... I know. But I want, to, I want to see a little bit more from him again. I keep putting him on the agenda. Cade Chandler didn't look right. A few people saying he may have been 50-50 this week. Maybe he gets up. We've got Lockie Hunter, your favorite, as an emergency. Marty Hoare and Ben Brown as the other two emergencies. So... If Kay Chandler doesn't get up, then you'd have to think that Lockie Hunter will take his place. God. Um, <laughs> Cozzy, Rue, Disco, Gorney, um, not Gorney, sorry, uh, Fritter, and obviously Harrison Petty as a forward line setup. It's going to be really interesting because as much as we've been talking about Jezza, Tomahawk, Myers, Close, they've even got Ollie Henry, Tyson Stengel, Two very good players as well, particularly Stengel. They've got a good Henry, backline. Henry's been really impressive this year as well. And they've got a good backline marker. Like, Mate, they're, they're a really good side. So, But I think, and, and you said it earlier on, I think where we can really separate ourselves is in the in the guts. 100%. And, and it goes back on to our three guns. And you throw in a sparrow in there as well, and whoever else wants to roll through there, if Cos. it's going to be a cause or it's going to be a rivers, whoever it is, has to be a dominant performance out of those guys. But especially your Vinies, your Olivers, your Betrakas, big time has to be because 
yeah, our defense is mint. Theirs is mint. Their their forward line is really impressive. Ours have their moments. So in order for us to get the chocolates, they have to be not only dominating contests, running both ways, defensively, yada, yada, yada. They have to be hitting scoreboard as well. Yeah. Like Petrarca has to be kicking one. Someone else has to bob up and kick one who's playing through the middle there as well. Is it the game for Clary to finally re-announce himself? He had the huge one against the Doggies in the second round. Is it time for Claz to just be like, right, my finger's good again. I'm ready to go. Well, if if his finger's good again, then 100%. No excuses. No. If you're playing... Yeah, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, we give you a reprieve after you've had the bye, you've just had surgery. He gets a few reprieves. Yeah, but I, I want more out of him. I want more. Oh, mate, no doubt. Like, I really, like, this could be the game. Like, announce yourself again to the rest of the comp. Like, there'll be a lot of people watching this game. Yeah. There'll be a lot of people interested in first versus fourth. Ah, Geelong real. Ah, Melbourne the real deal. We it's don't even know what we are. It's a crazy round of footy. Like, we don't even know what we are. It's an insane round of footy. The That's... other thing I wanted to say, and then I think we do predictions and we do our top five rivalries because I like the idea of that before we go out. I've heard some murmurs about the crowd on Saturday night. And we saw Geelong and Carlton, 87,000. We know we're not going to get anywhere near that. I'd love to know the percentage of Carlton to Geelong fans because I don't reckon Mm. Geelong fans will front up. On Saturday? I don't reckon they even fronted up last week either that much. Yeah. I think they're piss weak, like us. I think our fans are pretty piss weak as well in terms of fronting up to games. Well, I beg to differ because I think the numbers are still pretty good when you weigh them up. Pretty good, but like on the scale of things, we, we should be getting more fans at games. I, I, historically, we're not great at fronting So how, how many are you expecting? Am Saturday? I expecting or how many do I like? Well, go with the, go with the two, two schools of thought. How many would you like? Well, I would love 75 to 80. You're not getting that. I know. So how many are you getting? 60. Yeah. At a pinch, maybe. Yeah. 55 (laughs) to 60. Yeah. And it's a Saturday night. Yeah. And we're playing a team who hasn't lost and we're a genuine contender. And it's like, we finally get to play at the G. Like, we... You know, we we don't have to go down to Geelong. We're playing Geelong in Melbourne. Come to the footy, come and see it. Like we don't have to go down there. Why are you at home? What are you doing? What is stopping you? It's bring a mate. I'll bring you. <laughs> I don't have any mates to bring. But I'll I'll take it. But what is what is actually stopping you? I don't know. You got to get to the game, and you we can... have the fans. I don't I don't know what it is. Make it a cauldron. Honestly, I, I'm I'm with you. It's it's come up the highway. It's our turn. We're hosting you. None of these bullshit excuses. It's Saturday it's night. It's to get a little bit cold. No. It's Saturday, no, 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 no. Don't worry. Have a couple of drinks. Warm yourself up. Bring a scarf. Make it red and blue. Yeah. Just get to the game. It's yeah. going to be a good one. Yeah. Probably and, not, but... But, Mark, the other thing that we're missing as well is the opportunity to knock off the undefeated team. Thank you. The undefeated team. Yeah. Be the first ones to knock them off. Yeah. It's party. And it's, then it's back. And then it's like, shit, who's next week? Carlton. Go again. Go again. You Rock win that, up again. And then it's like, here Rock we go. Rock up again. Rock up again. And that's a Thursday night game? Yep. Huge. Love that. Couldn't agree more with you. Get to the game. Get to the game. If we win this weekend, it's 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 head out for a little bit. It's it's roll in at two three a.m. It's go and do swimming lessons with my little boy at mm. eleven o'clock on Sunday. You know, almost you know, dunking him under the water and forgetting that he's there and oh, fuck and just being a little bit delirious while I'm in the pool. Like for it's sure. those types of areas. If we win this game, yeah, big time. So it's that any time you beat along for me. I hate them. Same. It's big. Uh, prediction? Us by 17. Okay. Bog? God, don't ask me my bog. Remember last time? Um, <laughs> best on ground. I mean, I just... Am I going with my head or my heart? Whatever you want. I'll go with my heart, who I really want to be oh, bog. Oh, you want a bog. Uh, I want 
Cozzy to really be Come like on, Cos. electric. Yeah. Because he's playing against another fellow who has an all Australian jacket. But Cozzy, I think, is a more talented, complete player than Stengel. Stengel has an all Australian though. And I want Cozzy I really want him just to just dominate. Yeah. And that doesn't mean getting twenty odd touches <clears throat> and but kicking three like mint kind of like team elevating kind of goals and just give me 15 touches. He's setting up a few. I just want him. I want, I want Cozzy. Cos. All right. I'm going to go D's by eight points. Yep. Real tense at the end. We're talking like last few minutes. 17 is a stretch, by the way, for me. Yeah. But I, I, feel like, I feel like it will be really tense. And then we'll have a bit of a relief in the last couple of minutes and we will go bang, bang. I've got eight points in my mind. There's two minutes on the clock. The ball's in dispute in the middle of the ground. It could go either way. It's two points in it. Viney wins it. We get it into our forward half, into the hands of Rue. <laughs> I thought you were about to say Disco. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Sorry, Disco. And Rue kicks what is ultimately the sealer. Okay. And he needs it for his confidence. But I actually think it's a night for Bailey Fritch. Okay. Yeah, just got a feeling. Just got a feeling about Bailey. You kick four or five. Nice. Might be bog if he kicks four or five in a low-scoring affair. He, I think he might be the difference. I like it. And the reason I say that is because I don't see... I see potential for him with the matchups. Henry's... It depends who Henry plays on. But that's where I think Henry's a Henry's a good matchup on him. However, this is the thing that I I really like. I thought about it last night where I was staring, staring at the ceiling because I'm a loser. Daniel Turner, Jacob Van Ryan, and Harrison Petty. Yep. One, two, three. Co- College Adjani plays on Rue. Yeah, maybe Sam DeConing. Maybe sh- the thing is, this is where I think he no, gets freed the, up. No, but the thing is, we. I think the AFL competition rates Fritch so highly. I it wouldn't surprise me if they put Stewart on Fritch. Yeah, but then Fritch could do what he did against Moore on King's birthday. Yeah, he could take, he, take he him could. high up the field. Yeah, he could make him have to have to think about. And look, oh. if he if say say Stewart does play on Fritch and Fritch kicks three, four big goals. Yeah, then yeah, I'm with you. That's that's. Massive, just, and you nullify the influence oh, yeah. of Stewart. Well, I'm just thinking Henry De Koning, College Jasney, probably have to go to those. De Koning as well. I'm saying probably have to go to those other three. So I'm thinking De Koning on Disco, maybe. If Tom Stewart wants his free reign and he wants to do whatever he pleases, and he's not accountable for an opponent, Bailey uh, no, Fritch. We won't let that happen. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying we that, have a plan for we've, him. Apparently, we've got a plan. <laughs> Apparently, we've got a a huge plan for him. But the point is, I can just see the Turner, Rue, Petty mix giving Fritta a huge, huge op to just get busy. Top five rivalries in the AFL before we go out. You have to say showdown. Is it number one? Uh, I wouldn't say number one. Are we doing chronological or are we just throwing them in a... In a mixed bag. We can do chronological. We can do the chron. Well, we'll just throw that in there for now. Carlton Collingwood. You, I mean, I think that's not that's number one. Okay, so we just pencil it in number one. History, the yeah. the, the amount of time that's huge has to be. And then what else goes in the mix? Well, then you would have to say. Freo West Coast. Yeah, they've been doing it longer than the showdown. Yeah, has it got to be in there? Yeah, it's the derby. <laughs> I feel like any any two ta- like for me it's oh the Q clash. No, 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 okay. So, for me, it's any AFL-dominated states. The Q clash. The ones who have two-team representatives. GWS Sydney's getting better. Yeah, but it's not. Oh, no, 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 no. But, um, yeah, for sure. It's getting better. It's good fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's good fun, mate. Yeah, but they still don't know the In rules. the top five, I'm, from, what I, from what I experienced in WA, I, I have to say that that has to be in there. South Australia has to have their showdown in there. Sure. So Carlton Collingwood, SA, WA, those two rivalries, yeah. and then there's two more. There's room for two more. Uh, 
Look, you might even say... Geelong Hawthorne? Yeah, that's a modern day... Th- I mean, actually, that's been going since the late 80s, I guess. So that's it's pretty That's pretty right up there, isn't pretty it? pretty big. Or is it throwing Collingwood against Essendon, Anzac Day? Yeah, I, well, I mean, that's one day that they kind of have for it's sure. St- I still think you almost got to put it in. But I'm thinking of like who has like big finals and grand finals against each other because for us the old rivals it was us and Collingwood but we're obviously not we're in. not involved <laughs> <laughs> we're not involved in we're that. not involved um, is it is it Essendon and Collingwood that you got to throw in there yeah because Richmond don't they don't have like a Richmond Carlton's pretty big it is pretty big. I think Essendon, it's... Collingwood, and then look, I will say Hawthorne and, and Geelong. Geelong. Do you reckon we've rounded it off well enough? I'm just thinking about all the other teams. You don't even can, you don't even consider North some and of them. Saints. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a big one. Giants and Frio. <laughs> we've had some big <laughs> clashes. Tassie and North. Yeah, that'll be a big one. When they one play. in the same, maybe. North had four thousand seven hundred fans at that game. Doesn't that surprise me. That's disgusting. I think also there's been a, a, a massive um, kind of push from all the people from Tassie who are like, <clears throat> "We've got our team, get out." Oh yeah, which is so fair. I think the other one we forgot about, which is it's huge, is Essendon and Hawthorne's a huge rivalry. Yeah, that's a good shout. That's a big one. That's a good shout. They hate each other with yeah. passion. And then I'd almost go as far to say this Geelong Melbourne thing in the past six, seven years has really <laughs> skyrocketed. It's not big. Yeah, no, I'm not. I, in, we're not talking about the top five anymore, but let's, not at all. let's talk about the demons. I'm just saying in recent years. Who, been, yeah, let's talk about us within well, who, who, been, who do we have rivals with. 100% Geelong and the other one is Brisbane. Br- the Brisbane thing's been big. and then Brisbane thing's been real, but Collingwood it hasn't been hate like us as well. Yeah, well, there, there's the class thing. I think the, I think the Rich D's, versus poor. Well, it's just it's just a general belief that it's yeah that's that's like that's what it's all about. Like you think of the you happy stereotyp- to be, you're happy to be on the rich side. You, well, you think of the stereotypical <coughs> Melbourne supporter, and you think of the stereotypical Collingwood supporter. There, you know, it's chalk and cheese. Rich versus poor. But and look, we are one of the oldest of rivals. That was through all through the fifties. True, they don't like us. Yeah, at all. Braden got brought brought up on the table last night. Really? Yeah. It's an off-air story. Huge. Yeah. The listeners, I've just teased them. Let's tease them a little bit more. Mm, chippy. I reckon you have one. All right, we'll wrap up. Play ratings. <clears throat> Pardon me. Play ratings. Sunday morning, Lloyd Toflon, Scott Horton on the review show. Lloyd? Yes. It's debut for the year. Huge. Massive. The tough. I've lost my voice. Um, and I'll lose it again on Saturday night. Yeah, big game. We'll see you later. Enjoy that crunch. <laughs>